Hi, I'm Kat Miller. Welcome to this week's edition of Passionate Living. Today we have a sentimental show for you as I introduce you to some very passionate friends. The first is rock and roll drummer Gary Malibur. Gary grew up on the west side of Buffalo, New York, and with his amazing talent as a drummer and composer, he found himself right in the heart of the music industry. He recorded albums with Van Morrison, including Moondance, which is one of my all-time favorites. He was also a member of the Steve Miller Band, not only as a drummer, but as a co-composer and backup vocalist, and so much more. You won't want to miss the amazing interview from Gary's Thousand Oaks home outside of Los Angeles. Next, on a more reflective note, we're going to visit the life of Shane Gibson, one of the most dynamic and passionate radio personalities of all time. Ron Gibson, known as Shane Brother Shane, the cosmic space cowboy, worked in many markets around the country before arriving in western New York in 1973, where he lit up the nighttime airwaves with his heartfelt and often funny philosophical approach to life. He touched the hearts and souls of listeners in such a deep way that he created an everlasting bond. In the light of his passing recently, we'd like to dedicate our first part of the show today with a tribute to my dear friend, Shane Brother Shane. Right on, right on, right on. 47 going to 11 on a shade show time. Big Lee, honey, and the Mountain of Music giveaway has just started. We've got more albums to win. And now, more football scores, brought to you by Nick's House of Stakes, Staples Mill, and Broad. Terminage, 14, Highland Springs, 13, if you've got a score, I want it. 282 or 288 dig. TV, get time, Miller. San Francisco Rock, and Rose. Living in the U.S. Back in the day when I was growing up, radio was one of our key forms of entertainment. And in these broadcasting booths, our favorite DJs, who to us were our heroes, our demigods, would not only spin the music that would become the soundtrack of our lives, but they also were a huge influence on how we saw the world. One of my favorite DJs throughout the years, who I want to pay tribute today, who recently went to play for the heavens, is Shane Brother Shane. Shane was bigger than life itself. When he walked into a room, everybody would be regaled with Shane's stories and sense of humor and laugh. Shane was a dear friend of mine. Um, we met, I was probably just about 18 years old, um, heading into a radio station with Tommy Calandra, a dear friend of both Shane and myself and we used to do all the sports songs for the city and we were bringing the um, we're gonna win that cup for the Buffalo Sabres into the station and Shane and I became instant friends. He became family. We of course started a band together because as many people don't know about Shane, not only did he spin records but he loved writing music and singing music and creating it. He and Tommy Calandra, my beautiful friend who was also up there in the heavens. Uh, he and Shane would be found till the wee hours of the morning in his old recording studio. Shane would be playing a box, Tommy would be playing his honky-tonk piano, and they'd be writing music and singing together. giant spent time behind the microphone in Los Angeles, Montana, Greensboro, Spokane, and Salt Lake. But it's the Cosmic Cowboy. There he is. He may drop down and do 50. There you go. The, the Cosmic Cowboy arrived in 1973, but it was obvious that this city was going to be the one where he would make his mark. 
because he was on WKBW, then WISL, origin of his beloved whistle missile. We'll hear more about that tonight. Then on WGR, nothing was too challenging for this man from embracing his job as a program director, camping out on a billboard for charity, running for public office, or tearing up the links as a professional golfer, which we'll find out about. He is a member of the Buffalo Broadcasters Hall of Fame, Shane Brother Shane. <laughs> Every time I opened that microphone, I had, it sounded like I was just off the cuff, but I wrote my show every, every night at home from 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock in the, in the morning I would write. So that when I introduced an act, or I was talking about a situation, or I was coming out of the news, and loving every minute at WLE, it was just a great, great experience in my life. Shane, brother Shane, was unique super talented and a really nice guy. Rest in peace, my brother. We love you. Shane was the kind of guy he would tell you all these really weird things that he was able to do. And, do and the problem was he was able to do most of them. Okay? <laughs> But you never believe. Oh yeah, I won the hand rest, arm wrestling championship. You know, okay. I got the fastest car at Lancaster. Anyway. <laughs> he did. Okay. I can do this. I can do that. Okay. Well, now he was into karate. He's now he's the karate guy. Yeah, I got a black and pink and uh, no, forget about this the pink. This was Taikido, no. you twist. Okay. So <laughs> we both happened to go to the same gym, <laughs> and. I'm standing up against the wall, I'm doing some stretching, up against the back wall like this, and there's Shane, he's probably 20 feet away from me, and he goes, Aah! and he comes running toward me. <laughs> I'm, I'm up against the wall. Now his leg came up this high, <laughs> right past my head, boom, <laughs> through the wall. <laughs> right through the plaster. Now, he had trouble getting his foot back out. He gets his foot. <laughs> Shane, you almost killed me. He said, let's go in the other room. I'm so embarrassed. I can't, I can't. So we had to go hide in the next room. A big hole in the wall. The man almost killed him. That was Tom Haney's place yeah, at the 2001 Club, wasn't it? Hi, I'm Ray Ammerman. And uh, yeah, I've known Shane for about 30 years. And my first, and frankly, probably one of my best memories was when we initially met. Now, of course, I met him on the radio, and I was a starstruck fan. But I was the uh, managing editor at Metro Community News at the time when Shane was running against Massiello for the state senate. And he had come in for an interview to be endorsed. Well, uh, the endorsement interview was held at Denny's, very sophisticated. But on the way there in my car, I remember I had a cassette playing of uh, Take Six. It's a gospel a cappella group. And I've always loved singing, and of course, the fact that Shane is sitting next to me in the passenger seat doesn't stop me from belting out the song. And uh, top volume, Shane looks over at me, and I'll never forget this in that voice. He just looks over and goes, Damn, white boy can sing. And at that point, we stopped talking politics, we talked music for the rest of the interview, uh, and we became immediate friends. I told a friend recently that it was great to be able to glow in the light of his celebrity but that glow wasn't necessarily a warm glow. It was more like a neon sign in a corner that was short-circuiting every now and then. And uh, it was just craziness you never knew. But boy, you never stopped loving the guy and he never stopped loving us. Brother Shane was one of the most interesting characters I've ever known. Many years ago, he challenged me to an eight lap race for charity out at Holland Speedway. We used actual race cars. Now the guys let me have the inside because Shane had experience doing this. I didn't, although I'd done some off-road races down in Zora Valley, so I knew a little bit about it. They told me if you just keep your foot on the pedal most of the way around, he won't be able to pass. Well, easier said than done. He nearly did several times, but on the last lap, I had a barely lead on the inside. He tried to slingshot underneath me and spun out, actually grazed the wall. For many, many years, I never let Shane live that down. He was a good sport about it, but you know how competitive he was. And even though I did cheat a little bit, uh, it was really fun. But what a, what a tremendous person and guy and uh, 
We're really going to miss Brother Shane. There was really basically one Shane, the one you heard on the radio. <laughs> I think that probably and, was. And that was, that was, that was really him. Yeah, it, yeah, it really was. <laughs> Which is pretty amazing. So either either none of it was contrived or the whole thing was contrived. <laughs> well, and and uh, experts will be debating that for, for generations to come. It, it was a great time to, to see Shane reunited with his horse. He, the most important thing in his life was his uh, mi missile, whistle missile, whistle missile car, which was a famous car, the most famous car in 17 states. It's more a part of my body, my life, my soul, and my spirit than it is a machine. It's as much a part of me as this right leg of this right arm. We've owned, I own that car. That's the only thing I ever bought for myself new, and it's been with me 48 years. I knew that he could handle it. I've, He's the third person that's ever driven that car besides me. Wow. And the other two were my, one was my race mechanic and the other one was my wife. Hi, this is Mike Bellani. I remember Shane, brother Shane, when he was on the radio here in Buffalo. And we continued our friendship long after he left the airwaves here. And what a great, great guy. Um, I remember fondly when we were building Pilot Field and he was on the radio and he wanted to do something different. Let's hear him tell the story. So the guy from the opposing conference, the, he get, the coach gets it, they give him a fungal bat. So he's at home field, I'm way deep in center field right underneath the thing, and he pops one up over second base. Well, I get it on the dead end, okay, fine. So then he goes, this is done, I'm ready to die. He pulls one down the left field line near home run, so I do another 80 yards over there, I bring it back. Now the last one I'm there, he pops this thing up, and I catch it on the fly <laughs> as I died two steps inside of second base. And the uh, crowd goes nuts. And Mike Bellani, does anybody remember Mike oh, yeah. Bellani? So Mike's standing over there on the first baseline, and he's going like this, because he's going to stop me and say, this is the first time this has ever been done, and you're a hero and all that. And I ran past him into the hallway and threw up, and he had to grab me and pull, pull me out. And I'm going like this, and everybody's going, yeah, you're so cool. And I'm going, <laughs> And I'm fainting. I'm literally. I've got my hands in his, in his pants. I'm trying to hold him. I said, "Please give me the hospital. Give me, give me, get me out of here. Get me out of here." And and he he says, "You can do it. You can do it." And I says, "I can't take it. I can't take it. I'm gonna I'm gonna die." And he did. They literally he literally dragged my feet to the stairs, and I fell down the steps, uh, in there, and just puked my guts out. And I'm sorry I took so much time, but you brought it up. That, that's that, a vision, Shane, that's, and you've given us one. That's one of the, that. My mission but has always been did. the people. You made it work. I want to thank everybody who helped me to put this tribute today for our beautiful Shane brother Shane. Shane, wherever you are, up there in the heavens, spinning records and writing your music and hopefully playing with our buddy Tommy, I want to let you know that you touched all of our lives in a profound way. And to everyone out there, I just want to send love and condolences for the loss of our brother Shane. and. I know that he will live on through us forever. Thanks for joining us today on this special tribute to Shane. When I was all alone, when I was really down, there was one light in my world, it was you. Thank you for joining us today on this magical ride into passionate living. 
Join us each week on Tuesday and Thursday evenings at 8 and Sunday mornings at 11. Plus, you can view segments of our show on YouTube at passionateliving.tv or on our website at passionateliving.com. Our goal in producing the show is to inspire you to live your dreams as your journey will end up affecting the world around you in a powerful way. We hope you'll join us each week as we journey into the realms of passionate living. Until our next adventure, remember to take at least one baby step to bring you a little closer to living your dreams.